Coming up tonight, poor practices. A United Nations human rights group inspecting several facilities in the capital. The report reveals poor conditions in some centers for detainees. Plus, an economic boost for the second city. A 100% Bahamian-owned company breaking ground for a mineral processing and product manufacturing plant. And later, tis the season for Junkanoo. We'll tell you how one creative Junkanoo is using his talents to help bring you a special touch into your homes for the holidays. That story and so much more as our news weekend starts now. This is our news weekend. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Megan Shepard. A delegation of experts from the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention visiting 10 facilities and interviewing some 134 persons deprived of their liberty. The 10 site inspection included Bahamas Department of Corrections, the Carmichael Detention Center, Simpson Penn Center for Boys, and Willie May Pratt Center for Girls. According to information gathered by the Working Group, there are serious issues within the correctional facilities. The working group observed that detainees in this section lacked adequate bedding, sleeping on the floor or on very thin mattresses in very close quarters with up to four or five men in a small cell. Moreover, slop buckets were used and stored in these overcrowded cells. The provision of running water and adequate sanitation is urgently needed. The working group received information that some detainees suffered vision loss due to their detention in darkness. Dr. Ghana adds that the working group is extremely concerned that detainees were unable to access medical care, specialist care, or treatment for those that were drug dependent upon admission. She says yard time was also limited for those within the facilities. The working group is furthermore deeply concerned that inmates have not been allowed in-person family visits since the outbreak of COVID-19. The working group was informed that inmates could contact their family by telephone, but this is dependent on their families placing money on their telephone account. Moreover, many phones at the maximum security section did not function. In the remand section, detainees have no access to phone and must re request that prison officers communicate any messages to their family or lawyer. Consistent testimonies indicated that such requests were often not heeded and hindered their ability to contact their family and seek legal representation. Member Mamba Malia says there were also concerns within the Simpson Penn Center for Boys and Willie May Pratt Center for Girls, noting that some juveniles were confined to the center for minor infractions, such as uncontrollable behavior. It is of particular concern that children detained in the correctional facility, contrary to uh, juvenile centers do not have access to regular education. Family members are allowed in juvenile centers but not in the correctional facility where all visits were stopped since COVID-19. Moreover, both in the juvenile center and in the correctional facilities, the administration imposes sanctions for disciplinary offenses as, uh, such as the deprivation of phone calls it is uh, in the child's best interest to maintain regular contact with his or her family. Meantime, Prime Minister Philip Davis continuing to push for larger countries across the world to take accountability and financial responsibility for the negative effects of climate change globally, particularly on smaller nations. The Loss and Damage Fund was recently created to help close the financing gap as larger countries make financial pledges. However, while in Dubai for COP28, the nation's leader telling world leaders that he was concerned about the small amount of pledges. Meantime, Prime Minister Philip Davis continuing to push for larger countries across the world to take accountability and financial responsibility for the negative effects of climate change globally, particularly on smaller nations. The Loss and Damage Fund was recently created to help close the financing gap as larger countries make financial pledges. However, while in Dubai for COP28, the nation's leader telling world leaders that he was concerned about the small amount of pledges. But we still look to we still look to the industrialized nation because as I speak, we have joined 
uh, in the action um, to get an advisory opinion from the International Court of Justice to determine what, what steps we should take in respect to liability of those who would have, as it were, the big polluters, whether they are in fact liable to us, so we can get what I call some relief for what they would have done. Other countries will also have the opportunity to join in on court action to seek advice from the International Court of Justice. It's a block of small island developing states. Um, it's called the Association of Small Island Developing States, of which we are part, and I sign on to it. Um, the hearings did start in November, but uh, the, the court has adjourned it for further hearings to January to allow other countries who wish to join us to file briefs. Now the Prime Minister noting that he will not be deterred and will continue to push for larger countries to take responsibility. But in the meantime, the Bahamas will continue to explore other options to lessen the nearly 40% of the national debt related to rebuilding and restoration efforts due to the negative effects of climate change. The challenge is our own resources. Resources are, are diverted from providing the services that we need to bring relief to our people to continually restore and rebuild following a hurricane. That can't be fair on a country like ours. Prime Minister Philip Davis anticipates the Bahamas will be removed from the European Union's blacklist by February. It came one day after he revealed the European Union changed the Bahamas' rating to not harmful. He said that as his government made efforts to remove the Bahamas from the blacklist, the administration found multiple issues about the previous implementation of the economic substance reporting process that didn't meet the OECD and EU's strict standards. He says by that time, the Bahamas Thomas should have met all the accomplishments. I think at the next council meeting of the U European Union, and I think that is scheduled for sometime um, early next year, they, they fix those meeting dates, and it's usually either in February, if they have that meeting, we hope to have a, a, new, have a new look on it, and by that time we should we would have done everything that we are supposed to do to have it all sorted out. The deployment of an armed multinational force to Haiti getting the green light by the United Nations Security Council. This as the Caribbean nation continues to wrestle with ongoing gang violence. Commander of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force Commodore Raymond King says they're about to deploy. However, they have yet to receive explicit roles and functions. Persons would have been selected um, a year ago. We did complete one iteration of training but we have now moved into a different phase because the environment in Haiti has changed. And so we're going with three platoons, a minimum of 50 persons per platoon. It is expected for those persons to spend four months duration in Haiti. The country of Kenya has pledged to send 1,000 troops and is expected to lead the task force. Jamaica and Antigua and Barbuda have also pledged to send forces. Meanwhile, the United States has pledged logistics and $100 million in support. King says officers from all departments of the defense force will be deployed. Intelligence, administrations, operations, planning, communications. You need persons from all of those disciplines, including interpreters, persons from our welfare unit, our chaplaincy office. And so those persons would have been deliberately selected. The Commodore also adding that Marines are constantly training year-round, whether locally or with regional and international counterparts. He says all officers were required to meet specific standards set by the United Nations to be selected. In terms of the person's age, service years, medical, physical conditions, there are some um, criteria that we, we have to meet in terms of our selections. But we have selected the persons who would have been extensively trained every year. Special Operations Command, they come in country with their mobile training teams. We are training infantry, optics urban tactics. Grand Bahama getting an economic boost recently. This as ground was broken for the Bahamas Mineral and Manufacturing Corporation Limited. The 100% owned Bahamian company focuses on mineral processing and product manufacturing. Prime Minister Philip Davis was on hand for the ceremony. He says the project is in alignment with government's blueprint for change. While Grand Bahama Minister Ginger Moxie says this new venture will provide innovative jobs and careers for Bahamians. 
the MMC is not only supporting the Hayman infrastructure, but also aligning with the nation's environmental sustainability goals. Our government's blueprint for change emphasizes various key areas such as rescuing the economy, empowering Bahamians, revolutionizing education, promoting health and wellness, and developing a plan for each island. Today's groundbreaking also highlights the diversity of Grand Bahama and your commitment to community development, sustainability, and environmental stewardship supports the Davis Cooper administration's call for investors to be socially responsible community partners. A five-acre lot has been secured in Freeport for the company's operations. During the groundbreaking ceremony, Cornerstone was also laid for BMMC's first factory building, a 19,500 square feet facility, which will be the nucleus of the company PVC pipe manufacturing operation. CEO and founder of BMMC Limited, Mitchell Thurston. BMMC will initially enlist a workforce of 33 or as we prefer to designate them, team members. This team will comprise a blend of skilled and unskilled labor, allowing our company to extend opportunities to a broad spectrum of individuals, irrespective of their circumstances or background. We intend to produce, to introduce a cadet program right here in Grand Bahama through our local schools. Yes. We're going to be molding the next generation into skilled, trade, in the skilled tradesmen and women. And the best part, the cream of that crop, the best cadets will receive an opportunity to join our team here. We've got lots more to tell you this evening, but first, Ian McKenzie joins us now with your first look at weather. Ian. Thanks, Megan, and good evening, Bahamas. Here's a look at your forecast. Currently outside our studios, we're in the cloudy skies, temperature 76, breezy conditions out of southeast at 17 miles per hour, feels like temperature of 80 degrees. Current temperatures across the country at this time, we have 77 in Freeport, Marsh Harbor, also in Nicholstown, Andres, 79 in Alistair, Governor's Harbor, 78 in Great Harbor Key, 76 in the capital. In the central Bahamas, we have 79 Camps Bay, Arthur's Town, 80s in Georgetown and Edmunds Key, and 78 in Coburn Towns and Salvador. For the southeast Bahamas, we have 81 in Duncan Town, Ragged Island, as well as Matthew Town, a pair of 80s in Colonel Hill and Delectable Bay, Auckland, and a pair of 79s in Abrahams Bay and Providentialis, Turks and Caicos. First look now at our satellite and radar imagery. We have some cloudiness. This is all associated with a strong, potent cold front that should be racing through the Northwest Bahamas tomorrow. That's your first look at weather. Stick around, we will tell you more about this cold front straight ahead. Still to come on our news, access to social services now easier for one local community. The minister with responsibility explains the benefit of a new location. Plus, over $37,000 donated to 15 schools across the country. And it's all a part of a national school farming initiative. We'll tell you all about it when our news weekend returns. Doctors Hospital is reimagined primary care. We have invested to improve our health system, ensuring that accessible, affordable, world-class clinical care is closer to you. Your relationship with a primary care provider shapes the foundation of your overall health. Our new, modern primary care facilities are where critical diagnosis and true personalized treatment begin. With locations across New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma, we invite you to experience the Doctors Hospital difference. Book your next appointment at clinics.doctorshoss.com. Have you heard that sound? It's the sound of us. Since our origins, we burst music. Our sounds mix together. So let us hear your sound too. Your sound of passion, of joy, of friendship. The sound of your style and the beat of your night. It's time to play together the sound of Guinness, the sounds of greatness. The Department of Social Services opening a new office on East Street South. Officials say the new facility is a much-needed addition to the department. State Minister Miles LaRota, who has oversight for the Ministry of Social Services, explains what this new location will cater to. 
This is going to be a one-stop shop for units um, that deals with children, domestic violence, that deal with court reporting as it relates to, to divorce and legal separation. So um, in the past, those, I think it's about six units, were scattered. Now there are, it's a one-stop shop for dealing with matters, especially as it relates to uh, children. Stakeholders are coming together to push for food security with a backyard farming initiative. The Agricultural Development Organization, Royal Caribbean International, and the Ministry of Agriculture launching a backyard farming initiative in the Centerville constituency. Agriculture Minister Jomo Campbell stressed the significance of the project. This program is of extreme importance. Anytime you have a vision or an idea, as a government, the key to its success is having public buy-in. So what better way to have the public buy into the idea than to get them engaged? And so that's what we want to do. So as of today, we can now honestly say that we have approximately 500 backyard farmers in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And that goes a long way into putting a dent into our import bill when it comes to food security. The program handed out backyard farming kits to the community. Now this is the second constituency where the program was launched. One individual will win a free trip aboard a Royal Caribbean cruise line. General Manager of Royal Caribbean International Bahamas, Philip Simon, was also on hand for the initiative. Creating a sustainable planet takes more than massive recycling. It also involves the things that we can do every single day, including the nutritional benefits of growing our own food. We understand that there will always, always be a need to feed, but if we begin to grow more of our own and restore the joy of farming, I don't have a grain thumb, uh, at least not that type of grain thumb, um, but certainly um, I believe it's, it's, it's an important thing, especially in these days and times uh, as we see what is happening around the world. Agriculture programs in 15 schools around the country getting a major boost as government is investing over $37,000 in resources as a part of its National School Farming Initiative. Agriculture and Marine Resources Minister Jomo Campbell says the investment is important as agriculture is fundamental to the survival of all Bahamians. This initiative not only promotes hands-on learning and practical skills for students, but also encourages sustainable agricultural practices from a young age. By supporting these programs, the ministry is helping to create a generation of environmentally conscious individuals. We hope that this will help to educate students about agriculture. For the Ministry of Education, the new initiative is just one part of an ever-evolving agriculture program. Currently, Emphasis is being placed on the revision of the high school agricultural science curriculum, implementation of basic agriculture technology, proliferation of school-based gardens at the primary level, climate smart agriculture, food security and sustainability, and fostering awareness of the synergy between agriculture production and nutrition. When our news weekend comes back from the break, a new marina and resort at Blue Water Key is expected to provide a legendary welcome for boaters looking to explore the country come 2025. And then Dolphin Key to the rescue. We've got the details on Atlantis' Dolphin Rescue Initiatives when our news weekend returns. Welcome back. Eastern New Providence set to welcome a new $110 million marina and resort come 2025. The groundbreaking ceremony held this past week for legendary marina and resort at Blue Water Key. Chairman of legendary family of companies Peter Boss telling reporters that he hopes this project will be the welcome wagon for people looking to do the Bahamas by boat. It's the size of the boats that matter and the size particularly in the barn but Right now we're basically budgeting at 700 plus boats in the barn, dry store. I don't know what the acreage per person, but we have very little on the property besides the barn. There's a, there's a hotel and there's like there's 40 villas. I don't know the exact numbers. Again, our main, uh, so you understand why I'm a little vague on the numbers, is not that I'm trying to 
fudge that. I just don't know it. And the reason is I need enough to accommodate boaters when they arrive. I, I'm not going to be a resort in the sense that this is going to come and you're going to have your family. And It's just there's not enough amenities here compared to so many other resorts there are in the Bahamas. Atlantis's Dolphin Key is much more than a place to have a day to play with dolphins. They're also a key element in the Bahamas Marine Mammal Stranding Network. Marine Mammal Manager and Behaviorist at Dolphin Key Atlantis, Henrico Haley, walks us through the rescue process. Whenever there's a stranding anywhere in the Bahamas, um, normally Atlantis, if any official gets the call, the government officials, they know to call Atlantis, that's where the Marine Mammal Rehabilitation Center here, we'll send down a team. We have a stranded network, a group of behaviorists that are on this team. So they're normally the first responders to when we have a stranding, no matter what island it's on. Um, once we get down there, they have a kit, they assess the situation, they can provide, you know, early care for the animals, try to get them stabilized in preparation for the transportation, and then that's when the animal is relocated here. Now from that point, that's where we use the Club Med facility, um, just to make sure that there's no, you know, pathogens or any disease that's potentially contagious that can spread to our population. Dolphin Key itself was born out of the rescue of dolphins that had survived Hurricane Katrina. And Hallie says they've had lots of success stories. And once the animals are deemed healthy, and depending on the government, um, we then make a decision whether that animal is good to be released back into the wild or if unfortunately the animal has to maintain and stay under human care because of health issues. One of the famous cases we have is M&M. &M. She was stranded and they were able to sort of Tiger post, she had a severe case of pneumonia after getting that sorted out and fixed. They were able to release it back into the wild tiger and is monitored where she did return back to her population off the coast of Bimini. So it's little cool stories like that, you know, and you see the graphics and the GPS tracker, seeing them moving with all the animals that originally they were a part of, it, it, it makes you feel good, you know, that you did something good and um, to help the animal and get him back to where he needs to be. On the other side of this break, our Jean Joseph talks Christmas flair with a junky new touch. We'll tell you all about these beautiful holiday creations when our news weekend returns. sticking with us. The weekend is officially winding down and that means it's time for another work week to begin. Meteorologist Ian McKinsey is back with your extended weather forecast to help you plan it all. Thanks Megan. Welcome back everyone. Here's a look now at your extended forecast where we have this cloudiness associated with a strong potent cold front that is expected to race through the Northwest Bahamas tomorrow and this should spell some cooling conditions. Boating forecast for tonight in the Northwest Bahamas, small craft advisory, winds will be southeast to south, becoming northerly tomorrow 15 to 20 knots behind at front, seas 4 to 7, up to 9 feet offshore in those swells, low tide 11.43 p.m. tonight, high tide at 6.10 a.m. tomorrow morning. For the central and southeast Bahamas, we're asking you boaters to remain in or near port, winds east to southeast at 20 to 25 knots, seas running 6 to 9 feet, swimmers remain on shore. Here's a look now at your national forecast. in your extended forecast that cold front is expected to stall just south of us and that should give us some rainy conditions throughout the course of the week we're looking at highs in the upper 70s low 80s lows getting down to the low 70s and even the 60s that's a wrap in the evening forecast make it a great safe fun night everyone Jason Saunders' junk new and airbrushing skills are hot commodities around this time of year as he helps to get groups to get to Bay Street. Now he's expanding into home decor and ornaments. Our Jean Joseph tells you how Saunders can help you put the finishing touches on your Christmas decorations. At an early age, Jason Saunders picked up a passion for the art of junk new. Watching his uncle, John Thompson, prepare to parade with the Saxons, Jason would learn the fine art of cutting paper and pasting along the way. As Jason got older, he could not escape the call of the drums and found himself involved in junk new throughout his childhood, like many of his friends. I became friends with Phil the Bill, you know, from Red Line Soldiers. It was one, he was one of the older boys, he was a bit older than me. But I followed them into the shop, and then, you know, I developed more of my more stuff, pacing and the other little skills, the junk new. I learned a lot of stuff just hanging around the guys in the neighborhood. Eventually, he began airbrushing. 
a skill coveted by costume designers in various groups like the Saxons, One Family, Barabbas and the Tribe, and Roots, as his brushstrokes bring costumes to life. When I come in, um, they, they call me the finisher. Because when I, by the time I reach the shop, it's, you know, when they say the airbrush man reach, uh, it's time to get, it's time to go to Bina, because I come in to do the, the heads and uh, other stuff for the lead costume, step dance and dancers. This year, he's decided to extend those skills to help you put the finishing touches on your Christmas decorations with a line of junk new art pieces that can be just a thing to give an old space a new look. Sanders says many of the materials are recycled, and the art embodies the spirit of Junkanoo, taking something old and making something new. One time ago, Junkanoo was in all these colors. Junkanoo was like scrap stuff, like um, newspaper and other things, and <laughs> sponge and all that. But now that we've um, added color on our own style as we continue, this is the end result. You know, so this is what they look at right now. This is Bahamian culture. This is a part of Bahamian culture. Pieces start at fifty dollars. Jason takes special orders through his Facebook page, Jazz Enterprises, and by phone, 463-6885. He's looking forward to helping you add that special touch to your space this Christmas. Reporting for our news, I'm Jean Joseph. Looks beautiful. Thanks so much, Jean, and thank you for joining us for our news weekend tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Megan Shepard. Have a safe and wonderful evening.